Welcome to the video demonstration of the software requirement specification template from Adaptive Processes. The SRS template is one of the most crucial product in a software project and hence this is an attempt to make uh, users understand the template very well. In this uh, video demonstration, we will take you through various tabs uh, that is required to develop a good requirement specification template. To start with, we have a cover page which is indicating for which project it is created, what is the current document version number, the date of the current version and a revision history. Uh, the reason we developed it in Excel compared to uh, what normally companies do which is the Microsoft Word template because Excel has inherently many benefits in terms of associating, in terms of filtering. So uh, later part if a customer or a stakeholder is very particular about producing a word based template, you may copy the same content into a word based template. The next tab is index uh, where all the tabs uh, have a direct link. So from here itself, one can go to various modules and from various modules, one can come back. So for example, if we want to see a use case template, we just click on use case. So we go to the use case page and if we click index, we come back to the same page. So these are the main sections that is present in the software requirements template. The very first tab is implicit requirements. It is an interesting addition to the software requirements template because many times we have observed that there are certain inherent expectations in the client's mind which does not get expressed because the client always feels that as a software development team or community one would be aware of uh, these features and uh, will implement them. So the reason for us to develop this implicit requirements template is to make sure that such requirements are actually verified uh, with the client. Say for example, in one of my earlier client engagements, uh, I had found that uh, the SMS integration was a key requirement which was not stated. But when the product went uh, for user acceptance testing, the user simply refused to believe that a product was delivered without SMS integration. So the whole process again got delayed by about three months because this expectation was not clarified in the beginning with the stakeholders. So the intent of developing these in implicit requirements is to uh, help the software engineering team and the business to come up with a list of commonly used functions or uh, features that the users expect and put them so that every time we develop a module we check it out whether such a feature is needed or not needed. The next tab is the NFR checklist which is a very very comprehensive non-functional requirements checklist. So if you see there are about 40 odd uh, uh, parameters uh, mentioned here. Uh, obviously, in this template, I will not be explaining each one of them. Uh, we would have a separate uh, small video on explaining the NFR checklist. So please refer to that. Uh, just to uh, highlight few like the audit and control requirements are basically meant for um, making sure that any changes to the database records are tracked properly. This is a very critical requirement in most of the financial services organizations where, where uh, the application user or the process owners would like to know each record, when was it updated, who updated it and why it was updated. So those are the requirements of audit and control. Similarly, there are about 45 uh, or 50 uh, NFRs which has been listed in the template uh, which will be explained in another separate video. The next one is the requirements catalog. Uh, some people call it as product backlog. Some people can call it as uh, something else like use case summary. So this is basically nothing but high level requirements placed um, in a particular format so that the senior management uh, gets a view of uh, what is that the feature is being implemented. So if you uh, view the words, it's interesting. Each of these descriptions begin with a verb, which is basically indicating the user is able to perform certain transaction. So you have a uh, requirements ID, which is just a short name uh, or a number. 
then a very uh, brief description of the requirement, uh, name and description. The criticality can be uh, nice to have, should have, must have or any other thing. Uh, who is the user contact for the requirement? Benefit can be rated on a scale of 1 to 5 saying how much benefit business expects to get uh, by implementing this. So, we will say the benefit is 3. Uh, the cost uh, is basically the effort part required to implement this. Value index is nothing but benefit by cost uh, and this can be a criteria used to um, prioritize the requirements. Use case reference is nothing but uh, if this is described in a particular use case that you can give the name. So, I will say this is a login use case and then uh, whether the specification is done or not. So, if the value will be yes or no, whether it is approved or not, yes or no, whether it is implemented or not, you can indicate all of them here. So, this is basically the product backlog uh, or the use case summary uh, used in various companies. Then the next tab is the requirements traceability metrics. The traceability metrics basically takes the requirement spec and aligns it to business case like why this requirements is required, what is the value to business or which business case it is trying to help. Uh, it may have subsequent uh, requirements like the functional requirement, high level design reference, implementation reference and test reference. The flow chart is simple uh, process flow chart which most of you may be aware how the uh, process performs. Then the next there is a tab for clarifications basically whenever an SRS is being developed obviously uh, people would have clarifications on the SRS which can be tracked in this tab. Then the use case uh, typically for each uh, use case we may develop this template so there may be one or two use cases being handled within one module SRS uh, otherwise the tabs become too long. But it's, I mean, in case the project is not very large and you have just six, seven use cases, then probably the same template can be used. Uh, the use case description again will come as a separate uh, small video because uh, that's a topic by itself. So I'll not take it here. Um, then the screen layout. The screen layout is uh, how the fields look like, how they are placed. Uh, this can be done using HTML or any other graphical uh, uh, interface available. Uh, there is also a summary layout uh, typically because in most uh, business uh, systems uh, one has a detailed view and one has a summary view. Uh, then the next tab is controls tab which is a very very uh, crucial tab uh, for capturing requirements at a very detailed level. Uh, many business uh, analysts and users have come back in the past and said do we really need to capture at this level I would suggest you do. Uh, because the benefit of capturing it in detail is it gives an excellent clarity to the developers and hence the subsequent uh, disputes with business is extremely minimal if you have followed this template. So, let me explain this template. Uh, the control name is nothing but how an object appears on an UI. Uh, what is the description of that control? What is the format like whether it is a var care, it is a date, um, anything like that. What is the size of the field that you need to capture? Uh, many often I have found business analysts to be very stingy about size and running into trouble. So, I, was, I would always request you to provide sufficient size so that in future uh, the requirements to change the database uh, is minimal. Uh, whether the field is mandatory on screen or not, whether it is to be uh, displayed or not. Uh, here it is actually it is not system generated so I will just keep it like this and generally IDs are system generated but otherwise descriptions are not. Then whether it is a primary key or not. What is the on screen length uh, of the field which is the pixel width. Uh, then what is the height on screen because sometimes you may like to give a bigger box for somebody to uh, write something in detail. Uh, whether it is editable or not. So, for example, the description will be non-editable once you save it. Uh, then we also have a uh, requirement to specify whether it will be left aligned, right aligned or center aligned. There can be a guideline for this, but it is still better to uh, refer it in the uh, designs uh, document so that the developer uh, makes it correct. 
uh, if there are some validations applicable like say for example the defect status will be linked to the lookup table uh, also the ordering of the field uh, like say for example when we order the defects we would like to put it by severity which is very low to very high uh, also remember that people tend to choose the very first uh, uh, lookup uh, drop down the C so be careful about it uh, then foreign key reference I have already told uh, whether you would like to set a default value what are the lookup values that you want the developers to at least seed it during programming uh, then what is the next control from where this will go uh, this is also very interesting to note that many times developers miss, it, miss the uh, tabbing sequence very often uh, and then if there are other fields dependent on the current field say for example you may have a country field based on which the state field will get automatically uh, refreshed uh, then you can also write a field behavior like so for example it's a save button so you, you say on click save the data entered in the form uh, the next one is the interface and batch processes so if your application uh, uh, has to interact with another system so you can write the interface names and what is the data that needs to be interfaced uh, the printing requirements are basically uh, required for uh, very specific applications how many copies have to be um, printed can you print duplicate uh, can you print original second time all those questions will be answered here uh, then we also have a tab called list of reports so where you basically give the report name uh, how often it is produced who has access to the report whether it is can be downloaded can be printed if there are some filter criteria what is the report layout name all this can be mentioned here the next one is like we had a, a form layout uh, the same way we have a report layout because developers also need a very specific format to be provided for reporting then uh, the security requirements of the application in terms of module function role and what kind of access uh, is provided um, then there is also a template for peer reviews where uh, if you have done a review of uh, the srs template uh, this can be captured like in terms of who all reviewed the document what all they discussed uh, and whether the review finally is accepted or conditionally accepted or rejected and then finally there is a sign off checklist for business uh, where uh, the business goes through this and then finally gives a um, sign off to the software development team so this is what uh, is a typical format of a software requirements template uh, please feel free to add more to it uh, in case your context uh, demands it uh, but this has been our uh, good experience with about 20 clients that we find this template to be very very useful thank you for attending the video demonstration of the SRS template.